Sir, while you were in space, we asked our social media followers to submit questions for you. And I'm glad we have this opportunity today to get them answered. So without further ado. Let's do it. Was it your intention to become an astronaut when you joined the Air Force? And could you explain your career in the Air Force and elaborate on how you became an astronaut? Well, you know, I, ever since I was a little kid, I've wanted to be an astronaut. And um, I knew one of the paths to, to that was to be uh, a pilot and a test pilot. And so I went in the Air Force to be an Air Force officer, and, and I wanted to fly. Um, but in the back of my mind, I always thought, man, it would be cool to be an astronaut. I'm sure I can't because that's a crazy dream and no one actually gets to be an astronaut. But um, I always did the requirements that I needed. I got a technical degree from the Air Force Academy and ended up being an F-16 pilot. And so I kind of checked all the boxes along the way, never really thinking I would get there. But uh, eventually it ended up working out. So I ended up flying F-16s at a lot of bases in the Air Force. Um, finally, as a test pilot at Edwards Air Force Base, which is where I ended up getting picked by NASA to be an astronaut. While you were on the space station, you completed three spacewalks totally 19 hours and two minutes. Is that correct? I, I guess so. I never added them up, but yeah, sounds about right. Can you describe your experience during the spacewalks, and could you explain what work was done during them? Sure. You know, to describe a spacewalk is tough. I, I, I've had a chance to do a lot of stuff in my life, flown a lot of airplanes and done a lot of things. And I've never done anything like spacewalking. There's something about being outside in outer space that's, that's kind of crazy. And it was, uh, it was really cool. About 1% of the spacewalk was, wow, this is really neat. Look at, look at Earth and stuff. And 99% of the spacewalk was, we got work to do. What's the next task? I mean, they were super, super busy, very, very busy spacewalks, a lot of work done. And we basically were rewiring the space station to get ready for uh, the next crewed vehicles, American vehicles that are going to be launching here in the next uh, few years, and also some of the cargo vehicles that are um, going to be launching. So we, we're doing a reconfiguration of the space station, getting ready for future visiting vehicles. For a majority of your time up there, you had a fellow brother in arms, Navy Captain Barry Wilmore, or Astro Butch as we know him on Twitter. Could you describe the camaraderie between you two aboard the space station? Yeah, Astro Bush and I, we're, we're great friends on Earth. You know, our, our, our wives hang out together, and um, we, you know, we've been friends for a long time. We were actually both stationed at Edwards Air Force Base. He was our token Navy guy and uh, we, when we got picked to be astronauts. So, yeah, we're, we're, we're great friends, and we did, it was really special to be there with him. Uh, we, we share a lot in common, so uh, we got to have Christmas service together, and it was really cool having him there. He is a Navy guy. But, uh, but we, we, got along, we got along very well, had some good-natured ribbing, and he would tell, um, you know, flying on the aircraft carrier stories that were probably only about 10% true, and, and uh, so we had, we had a lot of fun in space together. Any advice for the next crew? Um, you know, to be ready for the long haul. It's a lot of work. The space station assignment is a lot, it's, you know, six months, half a year, roughly, um, of work, and so you just have to be ready you know, when you get a chance, rest, relax, get some sleep when you can, because there's a, there's a lot of work. That's why we go there is to do work and to do science and maintenance and stuff. So uh, be ready to pace yourself. You were named the commander for Expedition 43 right. on the International Space Station. Could you describe your responsibilities in space? Sure. It's a really unique command because I had um, one American astronaut, one Italian astronaut, and three Russian cosmonauts under my command. You need to change your leadership based on the people that you're leading and the tasks that you have. And so I had this group of, you know, six of us, astronauts and cosmonauts, that were highly motivated, highly trained. We're all basically peers together. Um, one of the cosmonauts under my command is Gennady Padalka, who uh, next week will become the number one person with the most days ever in space. And, you know, Scott Kelly was one of them and Misha. They're both there on a one-year mission. Most of the folks had already done long-duration space flight, so I had a really experienced crew. These guys, you just let them go. They all had good ideas. We would get together and go, hey, you know, what do we need to change? What do we need to do? It was a very collaborative type of command. Much different than being, say, a Marine second lieutenant with a platoon of brand new 18-year-old guys right out of high school. It's a very, 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 very different leadership style. Um, and, and of course, we had a very high visibility. You know, we're on the international news and, and uh, this very complicated, very, it, uh, dangerous environment of outer space. So it was, it was really a unique um, command. It was, it was definitely an honor and, and something I'll never forget. Many of the images you shot from the cupola, which you were actually primarily responsible for outfitting back in 2010, have made headlines around the world. 
such as the images of Typhoon Maisak. Yes, that was amazing. What was the most amazing thing you saw from space? People ask me this, I just can't answer that question. I'm a, I love sunrises and sunsets and by the end of the mission, Samantha said, hadn't you, hadn't you taken enough pictures of sunrises yet? Because I was in there taking pictures. The very last picture I took was of the sunrise. Um, and I could just never get enough. And, and none of those pictures ever could quite capture what it's like to be there in person. Um, that typhoon that you mentioned was incredible. We, we saw a lot of typhoons and cyclones and hurricanes over the six months. But the eye of that thing was humongous. And we had this one pass that just happened to go directly over. We're looking down in this giant you know, bucket of a hurricane eye. That, that was really incredible. Um, auroras are amazing. The camera makes them look brighter and greener than the eye does, but seeing them with the eye is amazing because you see this, it looks like a ghost out there, and you can actually see it moving and dancing with your eye in real time, uh, that, that a still picture doesn't capture that motion. And there's, there's so many things I could go on for an hour talking about what I saw. You are an Air Force Academy grad. That's right. One of our followers would like to know if you have any advice for freshman cadets during their first year in the academy. <laughs> you know what? It's a great place to be from, is, is kind of the joke I have about the Air Force Academy. The Air Force Academy goes by so fast. When you're a freshman, it seems like forever uh, that it's going to end. I remember I just couldn't believe how slow my freshman year and my sophomore year went. And then the junior year, it was pretty fun. And uh, by the time I was a senior, I spent a semester in France and all of a sudden it was over. And when I look back on it now, four years seems like nothing. I mean, um, so it, the more distance you get from it, the more you'll realize just how quickly, and, and the more you'll realize what an amazingly great education that is. Because not only academically, you learn so many different, you learn all the basic sciences, all the engineering, so you get a history, English, foreign language, it's a very broad education, which is great, but they have leadership, athletics. Um, it's just, I think it's the best possible undergraduate experience you could have. Um, and, there's, and, they, and they keep you disciplined, and, and I needed those roles. And you know, had I gone to normal college, I wouldn't have succeeded as much as I did. So I, I needed some of the discipline too. So for the freshmen out there, it's gonna be over soon. You know, you take advantage of all the programs that you can, and uh, they can make it harder, but they can't make it longer. PT, it's an important part of our Air Force. How does one stay in shape on the International Space Station? I just got back from a couple hours of rehab and a VO2 max test. So we have um, three basic machines that we use, and it's one of the most important things we do in space. There's a ARED, which is a weightlifting machine. It uses cylinders with vacuum to generate the force, and you can do squats and deadlift and bench press and a lot of different exercises on that. We have a treadmill that you basically wear a football shoulder pad with um, bungees that hold you down and that provides your weight and you can run on a treadmill. It requires a little bit of coordination and, and after a few times you, you get used to it. And then we have a bike. Uh, it doesn't have a chair or anything, it's just like a, two pedals that you pedal free floating in space. It's kind of cool. That takes a little bit of getting used to. but um, So between those two aerobic, the bike and the treadmill, and the anaerobic ARED, um, we come back in pretty good shape. My, I just got my VO2 max score and it was within a few percent of when I left. Uh, so the, we come back in, in amazingly good shape after being in space for 200 days. What goes through your mind when you strap yourself onto the top of a rocket? <laughs> it's pretty amazing feeling. I remember walking out to the space shuttle looking up, seeing this giant rocket, you know, smoke billowing out of it. And uh, the Soyuz was the same thing. It's basically you're strapping yourself to the top of an ICBM. And it is, uh, it's a pretty cool feeling. I got to say there's nothing like the ride of a rocket going into space or coming back from space. Um, <laughs> I love flying jets. There's so many cool things I've had an opportunity to do, but there's nothing like a rocket ride. <laughs> Definitely. What, describe the landing. So the space shuttle landing is very different than a Soyuz. I, I'll talk about my Soyuz landing that I just had. Um, it's a capsule, and so the G level is a little bit higher. We got over 4 Gs coming back, which having been in zero G for 200 days, it was a definitely eye-opening experience. When the parachute comes out, the capsule just rocks and rolls for about 20 or 25 seconds, which seems like an eternity. I mean, you were spinning around. It was really cool. We, we all really were, we were enjoying it. <laughs> um, and then a few minutes later, it, the chute, or the chute kind of moved, the capsule moves underneath the chute and it's more spinning around. And then um, right before that, the Soyuz splits into three parts and so there's just some banging. It sounds like a shotgun going off right outside the door, right outside the window as the modules all separate. Um, and then when you land, 
the landing itself is a is like a car crash. I mean, it's like just a huge bang. You you know, you're hitting the ground going really fast, uh, and then we rolled over a few times. So. Um, it, the whole experience was unlike anything I'd ever had. Can you name and explain some of the experiments you got to participate in while you were up there? Well, I think we did maybe 200. I mean, it was the space station is a scientific laboratory, so I certainly um, did lots of different science. Uh, that one was NSO, I think, is a Japanese plant experiment. They're looking at ways to make um, plants grow more. Uh, longer and, and, and work better in space. I did some experiments with um, uh, vac vaccinations, trying to get better vaccinations for a couple different pretty serious salmonella, E. coli type of uh, diseases on Earth. Um, we did some material science uh, experiments, some combustion experiments, trying to improve the efficiency of combustion engines, which you can imagine if, if we can improve it 0.1 percent, that would be a humongous g gain here on Earth. Um, basically, every discipline of science, biology, physics, chemistry, astronomy, uh, a lot of human physiology, we, we were doing some type of experiment in that way. We did some work with uh, some commercial drug companies to improve uh, muscle atrophy and bone atrophy uh, drugs. So there was lots of different stuff going on. One of the coolest ones is one that we didn't have a lot of interaction with personally, but there's a giant particle detector out on the outside of the space station. On my spacewalk, I was, I was on it, and um, it's looking for anti-helium and different, uh, different particles coming in from other galaxies and to try and figure out what the universe is made out of. And so that was really a cool experiment. How do you keep in contact with your loved ones from space? Yeah, so NASA provides great support to us. And I know the military members that are out there sacrifice a lot more than we do. And um, there was a telephone that was available sometimes. It's IP phone, so it's kind of like telephone through the internet. And again, when we had the right uh, com coverage with our TDRS satellites, we could make a phone call, and then you get cut off in the middle of it. You know, sometimes it'd be a few minutes, sometimes it'd last 20 or 30 minutes. Um, we had email, and then NASA would try and set us up maybe once a week with like a Skype type of uh, video conference with the with the family. So we we were able to stay in touch very well with home and. Um, no complaints there. How has your outlook on life changed? You know, my outlook on life hasn't changed. I certainly appreciate things, you know, like rain or, um, I remember I was in, we were in Scotland, one of our stops for gas on the way home, and, and I said, hey, there's a bird. I could hear a bird, you know, for the first time, a real bird. We heard like sounds of birds, you know, on, on MP3, but <laughs> it was just really cool to hear sounds like that, or the sound of rain, uh, the taste of fresh tomatoes. I remember the, exactly what I was eating on the airplane on the way home. Um, those fruits and vegetables were awesome. So it's more just appreciating what you have and what may be a pain on earth. You think rain now is, I'm kind of like, well, that's so cool, rain. You know, I haven't had it for 200 days. Sir, I believe we are out of time. Thank you for taking time to chat with us. Thank you for your service. It has truly been my pleasure. From the NASA Johnson Space Center, I'm Air Force Staff Sergeant Antonio Gonzalez. Thanks for watching. Aim high.